Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about functions. So in the past few videos, we've looked a lot at control flow. So we've looked at things like conditional statements that allow us to selectively execute lines of code in our applications. And we've also looked at things like loops um, that allow us to repeat the execution of lines of code inside of our programs based on some conditions that we set. Now, another kind of control flow that we often work with um, are these things called functions, right? So functions just allow us to um, give a name to a sequence of statements that we want to execute. So why exactly do we need something like a function or want something like a function? Well, there's often cases where we want to repeatedly perform some action inside of a program, but we might not want to perform that action inside of a loop, right? We may just want to, you know, do some operation at the beginning of our program, maybe some point in the middle of our program and another point at the end of our program, right? So not say back to back. Now we also want to avoid say code duplication. So we don't want to just write the same, five, 10, 15 lines of code over and over and over that's doing the exact same thing. So the way that we get around this is by writing a function. So we can in instead factor out all this common code inside of um, a function, right? And just associate it with a name. So every time you wanna run, say, those 15 lines of code, all we need to do is invoke that function using that function name, instead of having, say, you know, that code duplicated all over the place. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can write functions in C++ and the basics of how we use them. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start off with, uh, um, you know, creating a new source file. So something like uh, functions.cpp. Now we're already somewhat familiar with functions um, with the fact that at the core of all of our C++ applications is a function, right? Our main function. Now our main function is a little bit special because it's where our program logically begins execution, but it's really just another function at the end of the day and has the exact same structure as the functions that we're going to be looking at. So let's try to recall what the core pieces of that structure are going to be. So of course we're, asso uh, we're associating some name with uh, a sequence of statements. So in the case of our main function, that, that name is just main. Now, after main, we have uh, some parentheses and inside of these parentheses um, is what's called a parameter list. So it's a list of inputs that we want to our function. So we may want to pass some values into our function um, that we're going to use. Um, but in the case of say our main function, in many cases, um, we can just leave this empty, right? So maybe our function does not take any inputs. So we can, might be able to just leave this blank. Okay. So of course we're uh, associating a name with a, a sequence of statements or operations. So we'll add this code block here with these curly brackets. And of course, um, our functions can also return things. So just like they can take, take these input parameters, right? So inputs to our function, they can also return things, right? To wherever they were called from. So, you know, in this case, uh, of our, in the case of our main function, that's just going to be an integer, right? So we return, say, some exit code or status. So we can say do return zero there. And our return type is just an integer here. So positive or negative whole number. Okay, so in this case, right, right, we have our name, a list of parameters might be an empty list, um, or it might have, you know, some inputs. Uh, we have our function body, right? So where all of our statements live that we want to associate with this name. And then of course we have a return type. Um, okay, so that's kind of the, the core parts of, of, of a function. So how do we write our own? So let's say we have some common operation that we want to perform. So maybe something like uh, printing an array. So let's go ahead and include a couple things first. So we'll include say our array header and our IO stream header. So we can uh, use std array and our std cout. And let's create, say, an array that we want to print. So we'll just say, create a std array of three integers. We'll call, it, uh, we'll call this just something like, you know, my array one, and maybe we'll just set it equal to one, two, and three, right? Those will be the three values inside of our array. Now we could, of course, just, you know, write the code to do this printing inside of our main function. So we could just write something like, uh, uh, you know, for all the values inside of, you know, our array. So for int value inside of my, uh, my array one. So we're using a range based for loop here. 
I can use std c out, print out the value followed, say, by a space. And then after I print out all the values followed by spaces, I can just print out, say, a new line character. Right? So this works perfectly well for printing out our array. But what if I want to say print out this array twice, right? Or maybe I want to print out, you know, a different array. You know, of course, I could just say, you know, copy and paste this code, right? And this would print my array twice. But as you can see, this is fairly wasteful, right? And a bit annoying to do, right? Suddenly, I, I have eight lines of code, right? Um, that are all doing, you know, the same thing, right? These four lines of code are printing out all the values inside of my array, followed by a new line character. And these four lines of code are doing the exact same thing, right? And if we say had a different array here, right? So, you know, say we'll call this my array two in this case, and maybe we'll change the values to four, five, and six, and we'll print out my array two here. So now we have a second array maybe that we want to print, right? And we're just duplicating code over and over here, right? Uh, so if we had three arrays, our code would get even bigger, four arrays, five arrays, six arrays. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we can solve this problem with a function. So we can write a function that will print out the contents of our array. Then instead of having to duplicate these statements over and over, we could just invoke that function. Okay, so let's go ahead and build up the, the parts of this function. So uh, we're going to need a name, of course, right? In functions, we're associating a name with statements that we want to execute. So maybe we'll just call our function something like print array. Now, what is our uh, print array function going to take as an input? Well, we want it to take our std array of three integers. That, right, that's the type here that we're printing. So we'll print, we'll just take as an input, say, std array of three integers here. And we'll just call this input parameter array, right? We can you know, give it whatever name we want here. Now, it's just a print function. This print function isn't going to return anything. Um, all it is is going to take our input array, print it out to the screen. It doesn't need to return any values. So we can give it the void return type, right? Void is just how we say, hey, this function doesn't return anything. Okay. And then we can start with our function body here. So our function body, uh, we can just extract, right, this for loop that we've been using here. And we can just change my array one to array, right, the name of our parameter. Then we can go ahead and get rid of our other for loop as well. And we can replace both of those for loops with just a call to our function. Right, so the way that we call our function here is by using the name and then passing in whatever arguments we want to take the place of our parameters. So in this case, right, we'll call print array with our my array one as an input. And then for our second uh, array, we'll just do the exact same thing, uh, thing, but with my array two as an input. So you can see here, we cut down on our code duplication and we actually made our code a bit more um, expressive. So it's very easy for me to scan my main function and understand what's going on. I'm creating a std array and then I'm calling a function to print that array, right? It's just called print array. Um, very easy for me to understand what's going on here. And I don't have, you know, multiple for loops anymore. Uh, anytime I want to print my array, I invoke this function so my uh, code starts executing, it creates my array, and then it invokes my function. So my control jumps up to my function, I run my for loop and these prints, and then I return and I continue with the next statement, right? We're basically reusing this code over and over every time we invoke this function. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and see how this works. So we can compile functions.cpp and give it an output name, say uh, functions, right? That's the name of our executable. And we can go ahead and run functions. And you can see it works exactly as if we had just written uh, multiple for loops inside of our, our, our main function here. We get both of our prints, right? Without having to do that code duplication. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of how we write these functions here and especially functions that don't return anything. But there are often cases where we do want to return, say, a value from a function. So what does that kind of look like? So let's go ahead and quit out of here. Um, and let's create a new example called, say, 
return value.cpp. And inside of here, uh, let's say we want to create another function that say sums the contents of an array. So we just want to add up all the numbers inside of our array and return that result. So in this case, let's go ahead and include a couple things like our array and IO stream. We'll write our main function here. So something like int main with a return zero. And inside of here, we'll create say an array that we want to print out. So maybe we'll just keep it simple and we'll use the same array of three integers again called my array. And we'll just set it equal to the values of one, two, and three for simplicity. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our function that's going to return the sum of this array. So we can just call say this function sum and it's going to take our std array of three integers as an input, right? We could just call it say array. Now we know that this function, unlike our other function, is going to have a non-void return type, right? We're actually wanting to return something from this function. Now, specifically the type that we want to return is an integer, right? We're adding up all of these integers in this function, so we should get an integer result. So we'll go ahead and use an integer sum here. Okay, we'll go ahead and um, you know, use our curly brackets um, to start our function body. And inside of here, we can you know, sum up the contents of this array using another range-based for loop. So we can say create an, uh, a result uh, called sum. So we'll set this equal to zero initially. Then we'll iterate over the contents of our array. So we'll say for every value in my array, I want to just add the value to sum, right? So we'll do uh, sum plus equals value, right? Then at the very end, right, after I've added all the contents to our variable sum, we can just return whatever that sum is, right? Simple as that. So to go ahead and use this function, we can invoke it down here, right? So we can call sum with my array as an input, right? And it will sum the contents of that array. Now, in this case, right, sum is returning something. Specifically, it's returning an integer. So that integer has to go someplace. So for example, we could just store that result inside of a variable. So we can say, you know, int result is equal to sum, right? Or we could just leave this to automatic type deduction. And we could say auto result is equal to sum, right? And our compiler would be able to figure out what type result should be because sum returns an integer, right? So we, we could just leave this to automatic type deduction as well. But in this case, we'll just specify int, right? It's pretty simple. So, okay, we've got our integer result. Let's go ahead and just print it out uh, to complete our program. So we'll print out, you know, say the sum of our array is, and then we'll print out uh, whatever the result is, followed by say a new line character. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of how we write functions with return values, right? Just like our main function, if we have a return value, so a non-void return type, we'll just return um, you know, something from our program. It might be an immediate value or it might be some variable. It could be either. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and we'll go ahead and exit out of here and we'll compile our return value.cpp. And uh, we'll go ahead and create an output executable name called something like return value. All right, so now we have our output executable. Let's go ahead and run return value. And we go ahead and see the sum of our array is six, right? So that makes sense. We added one plus two plus three. We got the value six here. So now if I wanted to use this function sum multiple times inside my program, I could. And I wouldn't have to duplicate, say, these five lines of code uh, whenever I wanted to just say sum the contents of an array. Okay, so that's a bit on the basics of how we write and use functions with void return types and non-void return types. Um, as always, below the video, I'll link you know, this CPP reference page on functions if you want to find out more about kind of the basics of functions and some of the more advanced um, you know, parts of C++ related to functions, so things like function objects. So that'll be below the video. And as always, if you want to look at any of the, this code or other code that I've written, feel free to check out github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.